Okay. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Terry Rarig, and I teach in the NSA department. And want to thank you all for coming. Um, on behalf of the Korea Elective, which um, is one of the organizers here, as well as Kate Walsh, who is the director of the Asia Pacific Studies Group. Uh, make sure that you are on her email list. Lots of good information that, that comes from that. But together, Kate and I want to welcome you to this event. Before we start, I do want to acknowledge and, and wish our Korean friends here happy Chuseok, <laughs> as tomorrow is Korean Thanksgiving Day and a big holiday. If you are in Korea right now, you probably are stuck in traffic. <laughs> um, but again, um, hope you have a, a great holiday, even though you're in the United States for this. So it is my pleasure and honor to welcome today uh, the Honorable Kim Jae-hui, who is the Consul General of the Korean Consulate General um, in Boston. He has a long and distinguished career in the Korean Foreign Service, 28 years and counting. Plus, he also has military service. Um, he served with one of the, with the Katusa group in Korea, if you are familiar with that. He has held positions in the South Korean embassies in Israel, Russia, which we had an interesting discussion this morning in the Korea elective about that. And I would love to talk more about him with that uh, from that experience. The European Union, Belgium, Belgium, Sweden, and the United States. Prior to his current position in Boston, he served as the Secretary of Protocol in the office of the President of South Korea where he managed the president's overseas visits, as well as the visits of various VIPs to Korea during that time. In addition to his degree at Yonsei University in Korea, he has a master's degree just up the road uh, from or in law and diplomacy from the Fletcher School at Tufts University. Tarek, today, Council General Kim will speak to us on South Korean foreign policy as a global pivotal state. And this is the foreign policy vision of the current UN administration. I can't think of a better person to have to lay out some of these issues and then to open up for questions and answers after his opening remarks. Consul General Kim, thank you very much for coming here to the Naval War College and we welcome you very much. Okay, first of all, so I'm very glad to be here in this historical school, and I'm very honored to be here. Well, I was have a sitting down because of this camera, so I was sitting down, I'm here starting my presentation. So thank you very much for giving this wonderful opportunity for me. Thank you, Professor Terry. Thank you very much. I already have one session. Some of you in here, I'm already grilled by them. So, so I understand you are all the experts on that the international affairs, military careers, diplomatic experience or academic background. So today, as Terry uh, explained, I will focus also Korea's foreign relations. So I choose, if you see my presentation, I choose the theme of my presentation, Korea's new path. The subtitle is freedom, peace, and prosperity for all. I'll do my best to help you get briefs of how Korea's diplomacy has been transforming for the last seven years. So my presentation would take so long, 30 minutes. And then after that, so I'm really hope so have some training to do. Okay. So today my presentation comprised the three parts. First one is journey of Korea. So I will briefly talk about the Korea's last 70 years journey, 70 years of our diplomacy. The second thing is that I'll move to the five agenda of Korean future. Maybe I can tell it is goal of the Korean the diplomacy. And third thing is lastly, the unified Korea. That is the new Korean foreign policy doctrine. So actually just the last month, 15 of August, that is Independence Day in my the Republic of Korea. So my president newly 
announced that new unification doctrine. So as a conclusion of my presentation, I want to talk with our new doctrine for unification of Ruby with you. And let's start with journey of Korea. So don't worry, so I'll prepare some pictures, not very small pictures about that. So I will simply explain to you. So Korea has a quite long history, actually. 5,000 years, we said. But it is too long and too far. So let's start from our talk from 1955. End of the World War II. From 1910 to 1945, so Korea has been under the Japanese colonial rule. You know that. So during the time, the Korea the lost our sovereign life. However, during the time, our national movement for independence very actively the doing. Our interim government and our the some military the activities mainly happened in China too. In 1945, the first picture, maybe you recognize it, that is the Potsdam Conference among three leaders, Churchill and Roosevelt and Stalin. So at that conference, those three countries, in case of the surrender of Japan, independence of Korea was reaffirmed on the condition of dividing first issue. And if you see the next, Picture the green one. That is the South Korea thrust ship by the United States, upper 38 uh, parallel the line, the Soviet Union. But it is, there is no meaning of Dorian line. It is just a very the convenient line at the time, no legal term, only they put it like the way. Since 1948 to 1948, 45 to 48, before the establishment of Republic Korea, for three years, just like the outside the external world, the Korea was in real turmoil. So confrontation and haggling between the right and left. And also very the dynamic negotiation between the time North Korea, South Korea, not yet. But those two areas, political and national talks, very actively is going on. However, we could not done or make it, it, it was the, the failure to make a one Korea with the support of the United Nations and with the commitment of people in case of the green areas, South Korea, through pre-election, we established the Republic of Korea in 1948, August. And one month later, that the yellow one. The North Korea at the time, the not North Korea, but they announced their own country on the name of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. So 1948, starting of two Koreas. Just two years later, the Korea in the war from 1950 to 1953. In 1950, June 25th, the North Korean the army, they broke down through the 38 parallel the Rhine with hard weapon provoked by the Soviet Union. The first picture is this great touching one. I really like that. If you see that two soldiers hugging together, so a little bit bigger soldier, he is the, I guess the, he is soldier from the United States. He hugging very young Korean soldier. Because that time the Korea has no formal army actually. So many students, they just enter into the Korean War without even the proper military exercise. For the next three years, from 15 to 53, Korean War is going on. And as a result, more than 20% of whole population of two Koreas, they lost lives. Soldiers and civilians. From South Korea, one million. From North Korea, 1 million, 0, 0. 0. 0.7 million. More than 2 million people lost their lives. For this very, very surprising attack, the South Korea has no ability, capability to defend 
our own country. So 22 nations came to us and together rebelling the North Korean aggression under the Charter of the United Nations. Oh, very small the pictures. So there are the 22 countries. Interesting thing is the United States, the largest uh, the army came to the uh, Korean Peninsula, not only the Western country, but also South Africa, Ethiopia, and Colombia, and Philippines, and Turkey. They also number, quite number of the soldiers to the Korean War. As you know that so in 1951, the Chinese, the People's Army, People's Army, they entered into the Korean War uh, with a very strong support by the Soviet Union. For the last three years, there was a war. 1953, armistice was signed. But if you see that next uh, map, if you remember the former map, that is the before the war. This is the after the war. There's only very small part of changes, right? The red one and the green one. In 1953, armistice is signed by three parties, United States, China, and North Korea. South Korea, we didn't participate in signing that the armistice. Because that time, the Korean politician, Korean president saying, this could be the last opportunity for us to make a unified country. So my the president, that time the Korean president, Sim Man Lee, he, until the end, he opposed to do signing the armistice. So the Korea didn't participate in signing the, signing the ceremony. After the armistice, it was 1953, so it's today, 2024, almost 70 years later. But we don't have any peace treaty. That means really two Koreas still in the condition of war. So we have still new United Nations Command Military Armistice the Committee, commi uh, Commission in Korean Peninsula. So if something still in something happened in Korean Peninsula, like uh, some the breakdown the armistice agreement, those commission meet together, and they judging so who do the wrong thing. Still going on this kind of mechanism. Okay, and the last picture. Do you recognize this statue? Maybe some of you. This is that the Korean War Memorial located in the Providence in the downtown of the World Island, very nearby the Capitol Hill. In the United States, the Korean War is recognized as kind of the forgotten war that I'm very sorry and sad to hear. The Korean War is the forgotten war. We, two million people lost their lives. And from the United States, 36,574 US soldiers, they lost their lives. And a little bit simply, from Rhode Island, very small state, 34,000 soldiers came to the Korea. 145 the soldiers, they made ultimate sacrifice. And I'm very sorry to say still, 37 soldiers still in missing action or POW. Even in very small state of Rhode Island, they have a very still this kind of the memory. Forgotten War, I think the now it's time to change that concept. Korean War is not the Forgotten War, I think. Okay, so move to other areas. After the Korean War from 1960 to 1970s, so I can call that the time of development and development. For 20 years, for 20 years after the Korean War, Korean focused on post-war recovery and economic development. During the time, I have to say that so we post upon everything except for the economic development, democracy, human rights, social justice. That is also important. We know that, but we are totally focused on economic development. Later on, we could discuss all these issues. It is only possible during the time my parent generation 
they really made a big sacrifice, everything for them, for their next generation, for us, for me. So it is only possible to offer the picture. So we made a new highway building, heavy industries, so our base foundation of Korean industry. It is only possible huge internal sacrifice and also assistance from the international community, usually from the United States, and also very special, extraordinary effort of the Korean government too. Next two pictures to show you. The first one is Korean the soldiers. They went to the Vietnam War from 1965, not 1964 to 1963 on the request of the United States. 600,000 Korean soldiers went to the Vietnam and around the 5,000, they lost their lives. That is the first thing. So the Vietnam War was a very important foundation of the Korean economic development and also learned the military strategy and also some that very, the, that time, very the highly developed military equipment we got. Another important the historical event during the time is next pictures. It was the resuming diplomatic relationship with Japan in 1965. We just finished our colonial rule in 1945, and it's only 20 years later we resuming relationship with Japan. The time through that government level agreement, so we got five million, five hundred million US dollar from Japan as a compensation. For get that the compensation, the time the Korean government officially announced that, so we give up all other the right of requesting compensation to the Japanese government. So later on, so we have so many historical issues in Japan that is because of those kind of hardship. That time, I think almost all Korean people opposed to that idea. Why we have to do this kind of so fast, so early? But anyhow, that time, so Korean government made decision. We need the money, feed the money, and we also need the cooperation from Japan technology and expertise of the industry. During the time, the last picture also, as you know, 1960 and 1970 was a high period of Cold War. But in 1970s, international community also witnessed that a little bit change of this Cold War system, the dump at the time, United States and Soviet Union, especially United States with China. So capitalizing on this changing move to Korea, started inter-Korean dialogue the first time since the Korean War. But that time focused on not a political dialogue, focused on the separate families. Around the more than one, 10 million people was member of the separate family at the time. And also in the late 1970s, the Korean government announced the first inter-Korean policy, like a unification policy, so no South, we are all together, but we are one people. And we can do the unification through the system of the confederation, they kind of say. But six and seventy, economic development, some kind of detail. But it is if we the borrow the term from the Helen Kissinger, we can define that some combative the coexistence between two groups. Moving to moving to best. From 1980 to 2000. So it is the starting of the big changes in Korean society. So erasing the world star and the passion for the transforming the everything, economy, social relations, postponing everything in 1960, 1970s, 1980s, people's opened. We, yes, we now get some development in our, in our economic field, but what is, what is everything? Democracy, our right social justice, the period of the political upheaval in Korea. The first picture, it was only 1986, only 40 years ago. Street, many Korean university, university students to some demonstration. Many students lost their lives. In 1987, that time being some authoritative Korean regime, yielded to the people's power, they accept. Next presidential election, 
would be done by the direct election. Direct election, directly the electing the Korean president by the people's power. In 1988, second feature, that was the Korean Olympic game. The problem is two rapid changes, socially rapid change in Korean government and Korean people. I have to say that fail to adequately respond to those big changes. So leading to huge crisis in 1997, financial crisis. It is very important period for us in 1990, it was a huge thing happened in the Korean foreign relations. During the time, the very distinctive foreign relation policy, we call that the Northern, Northern policy, similar to the West Germany's the Ost policy. We open our door to the former the communist country in the mood of Russian Soviet changes like the perestroika and also German unification. So in 1990s, we made a formal relations with Soviet Union, President Yeltsin, but that picture is the, the Gorbachev. And 1992, we also we opened our relations with China. And 1991, uh, South Korea and North Korea, we got be a member of the United Nations. So 1980s, 2000, it was a very rosy period for the Korean people, economic development, democracy, human rights. People just started to feel that in social justice. During the time of Rick Pogat, really important one thing, our neighbor North Korea. So North Korea felt neglected and threatened by this huge change in the international community and also Korean Peninsula. Now Korea has a formal relationship with China and the Soviet. Pyongyang, they make a decision and responded with a big surprise. They announcement of withdrawal from the NPT, non-proliferation treaty, in 1993. That is the start of the North Korean nuclear crisis. That's moving the new millennium from 2000 to 2010. Unstable advancement I call, the Korea found this time very huge self-confidence and pride in our amazing development. 2000, Korea became powerhouse, global power, transitioning into the advanced economy. So our the semiconductor and motor the industry, all kinds of the industry now they set their foot and we really they became some expert driven the countries. Even the time 2006, you, you can imagine that 2006, Korea was a leading country in international area for the climate friendly environment. That time, we are very strong for total even the reading in the environment area, green growth policy. Even we attracted one environmental international organization, the Global Climate Fund. 2000, the Korea is so developed country. So just compared to North Korea 2001, according to the statistics, Korean economic size bigger than North Korea 27 times 2001. Right now, more than 70 times bigger in the North Korea. In terms of the inter-Korean relationship, just reflecting over this kind of development, very rosy, very self-confident. Sunshine policy in 2002, the second in the picture, First, Korea, South Korea, and North Korea leaders, first summit. The sunshine policy aimed at fostering peace and cooperation between the Korea, like uh, some of the exchanges, helping humanitarian exchanges. First one is 2002. Second one, third picture is another inter-Korean summit, 2007. However, during this very sunshine areas, still, Always, North Korea is a military provocation to South. A few things I just mentioned, 1991, West Sea, the Yongpyeong, the, the naval the conflict. Second thing is 2002, just before the World Cup came. And fourth picture, 2006, even with a very strong objection from all over the world, 
North Korea did the first nuclear test. And keep going, North Korean military provocation. Last two pictures, it was 2010. 2010, March, the North Korean the Navy launched torpedo to Korean the Navy ship, Chonam, Chonam Han. It killed 46 the North, the South Korean Navy soldiers, very young soldiers. They sank down together with the ship. Last one, same year, November, they shelling the Korean territory, Yongpyeong, the island. A few people lost their lives. But during those time, even with those provocation, very clear provocation by the United by the North Korea, nuclear test, missile test, but still Korea has a little bit rose idea. So we could do something with the North Korea. So we can do something. We can resolve that you know, North Korean nuclear crisis, also international relations. But as you all, and all of you already know that, so no, that kind of rosy dream never happened. They cannot make any real deal, very substantive development. 2021, the UN Conference on Trade and Development officially announced that South Korea now is a real developed country. And from that economic and political term, South Korea now finally reached to our first goal. How about our security? 2018 and 2019. Second picture, actually that picture is 2019. The United States at the first time started negotiation, negotiate with the North Korea. So two leaders of the United States and North Korea, they met each other three times, 2018. 2019, Singapore, Hanoi, and Korea. But as you know, there is no the reason. One reason, only one reason of those failed negotiation with between two countries, that is the blaming on South Korea by the North Korea. North Korean side, the failure of the negotiation with the United States totally because of the South Korea. South Korea cheated North Korea and also United States too. Since then, the relationship between two Koreas is nothing. 2022, North Korea announced that, that we are now totally the armed nuclear country. And we are almost reaching to the goal of having a very complete delivery system of a nuclear weapon to everywhere. 2022, even North Korea mentioned that South Korea, no more to our neighbor, our brother. North, South Korea, from now on, it is clear, our enemy. So we can attack South Korea, something happened. Not only through the conventional weapon, but also nuclear weapon too. And they cut off all kinds of connection with us. Okay, so third pictures, that was the last year, 2020, 2023, my president visit make a state visit to the Washington DC together with the President Biden. They announced that the Washington the declaration, so it upgraded our alliance into global comprehensive strategic alliance. So all this kind of thing happened, but for the Korean people, when we reflect over all this nuclear crisis, all this kind of threat from North Korea, there are feeling I can define just three words. First one, disappointment. We try hard, but disappointment. Second thing is a petty. Wow, 70 years. We tried. We tried everything. But now we are so tired of this kind of game. Third thing, now we have to change the game. We need some new approach. So later on, so I'll be talking about our new approach. Yes. But small, it's not so much a small thing. So for the last 70 years, the Korean government diplomacy, the first one, very unprecedented, rapid, and remarkable development. Economics, politics, socially, everything. However, we are 100% overshadowed by North Korea. 
nuclear crisis, and every kind of crisis. 1993, that was the starting of the nuclear crisis since then. We tried everything, but no result. Korea and now international community totally constrained by the Pyongyang action. The Korean the diplomacy have a very strong foundation, our own effort, but also on the basis of ironclad Korea and United States alliance. It started from the 1953, the last year, 70 years anniversary. And as I already mentioned that those two words, global comprehensive strategic alliance, I'm a diplomat, but when we have a making some relationship with other countries, we call that some strategic partners, comprehensive partners. I think that is the ultimate, you know, the praise, right? The global comprehensive strategy. Every word, so we have that word. But there are two questions. How about China? How about Russia? There are two big nations of Korea. China, we keep thinking that with our relations with long history with China, we wish China could play some constructive role in Korean Peninsula. But now we think maybe we are wrong. So now we're thinking we have to make a new relationship with China, sustainable, very future relationship, sustainable relationship with China. Russia, Russia also quite a long history with Korea. Now we think you see that the Ukrainian war now together with the cooperation with the United uh, Corporation North Korea, now is the time we collaborating, fully the collaborating relation with Russia. So maybe later on, if I have a chance, I will a little bit more talking about those countries. So move on. Okay. So it's just around 10, 10 minutes and less of it. Most of five agenda. Yes. Resolute and unwavering security. So I think I don't need to more explanation about our first agenda. So we have to enhance South Korean military. The second thing is we have to strengthen US Korea alliance by conducting joint military exercises. And through Washington Declaration, now our two alliances is stepped up. Now we have nuclear consult group. Now we even, even discuss about how we successfully manage the nuclear strategy on the Korean Peninsula. <laughs> Even we started to discuss this issue between two countries. And also we expanding cooperation with like my country, Japan, European Union, and NATO. However, the North Korea possession of a nuclear weapon now I don't want to the, the recognize that. So we officially never recognize that. But their possession of nuclear weapon is, this looks like a reality. I put those two pictures, maybe you will recognize the third one. They're small, 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 very cute looking, small thing, the red tips. <laughs> that is a nuclear weapon. In this March, North Korea revealed that picture through their newspapers. They said they are they succeeded in miniaturizing the nuclear weapon in that size. And the, the most it's very interesting part is we cannot really see that, but on the wall, there's a small the plane. You can see it. Uh, yeah, small plane, there's a whole picture. That is a different kind of missile. ICBM, SLBM, medium-sized missile, even multi full barrel the launcher. It is a very conventional weapon, right? But they say they can put that miniaturized the nuclear the pad into that kind of weapon. That is the this March. Next one, that is the really current one. Last Friday, Kim Jong-un he visit this facility. This is the very new. The, they just opened their secret. That is, they said it is the one facility of highly enriched uranium facility. If you can see, there is a small cylinder over there, around the 2000, for one the international organization who has expert on estimation about this facility. That facility, the United, uh, North Korea, can produce annually 90 kilograms of highly 
in which uranium, weapon grade the uranium. That means they can make a 90 new nuclear weapon. But North Korea, we expect, we think, they don't have just one facility over there, maybe a little bit more. That means they can make 200, 300 new nuclear weapon every year. That is the reality. Not only this threat, but North Korea now may do all kinds of threat, not only to the South Korea, but also to the international community. Cyber attack, hacking, and also some all kinds of the weapon export to, to, to Russia, to Middle Eastern countries. Even nowadays, North Korea sending some balloon to South Korea too. For the last just only one week, they sending 2,000 balloons to the South Korean side. Later on, so maybe I can a little bit more information about the balloon too. The South Korea, our the policy is unchanged. Yeah, we know that very critical, but we know that. So we still asking the nuclearization of the North Korea is only and consistent goal of South Korea and all the international community. The South Korea recently announced that audacious initiative to North Korea. So we opened our door. We made a big, big package. Every kind, every incentive, every economic cooperation program, humanitarian program, everything is just one package. If the North Korea just to take very one small, genuine step for that denuclearization of their country, and then we will open the door. Same idea with the United States, all other countries. Now is a little bit sorry. The second thing is the stronger and sustainable energy. So Korea is now economic powerhouse. The Korean car, Korean semiconductor, ship, ship and batteries and everything. But the matter is the Korean economy is too much focused on that the manufacturer. So now the international trend in economy is changing rapidly. So we have to think about some environment friendly and also using some high technology like robotics. So this is all the new areas, the future of mobility and also the upper the downsides. That is the one example of that the quantum computer developed by the Korean company. The last one is that is the nuclear fusion energy making some power plants. The kind of new technology we are now pursuing. One good thing is the from through that Washington Declaration, the uh, United States and Korea as an alliance not only focus on the security, but also we together working together in this high technology area too. We have so many programs now. Third one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it has some feeling what I delivered the meaning to you. So the Korea, after the Korean War, we were so poor country, the poorest country all over the world. For only through the 60 or 70 years, now we become the developed country. So we know that. So once a uh, recipient of global aid from all over the world has now transformed into the country that give back what we were given, we want to give back. So we started from developing poor country. Now we advance into developed countries. So we want to share our the experience, know-how with all other interesting country international community. So first picture, it was the very interesting 1965, after the Korean War, Peace Corps. Peace Corps, I think maybe your relatives, your parents' generation, Thousand Peace Corps members came to Korea, voluntary. They helped us education and also sanitize everything. But the, our the embassy still have a meeting with that the members of Korean Peace Corps. They said that so. Oh my God! At that time, so poor country. After two generations, they are all surprised to some development. But it is not only the memory. So we really think we got so many things we got so many precious things from all over the world especially from the united states we have to we have to give it back to people who want our system the second is that the now we, we have doing quite actively some our peacekeeping operation 
That is the Dongmyeong unit. Now they are located in Lebanon. So they are not the fighting the infantry, team, but they are helping some other part, but they are Lebanon. So those two pictures, if something happened, all over the raw screen and flooding, and then some Korean people, the voluntary, they went there and they tried to help them. I just want to show them. And from Korean government side, so we increasing our volume of ODA, the official development assistant. We try. And the, the thing, so in the last session, very the thanks for the question. So we want to be the leading in global affairs, this plus is all the international forum, the Korea attended, Korea is uh, invited. So the Korea now as a advanced country has also very willingly helping to other countries. So want to play a very responsible and responsible player in all international community, international areas. Just one thing, so last week, the Korea hosted one international conference regarding to the AI. We call that re-aim, that is responsible use of AI in the military domain. So we are now trying to do some reading role. So AI development in military areas cooperation with civilian area too, making some governance and making some structure of this cooperation we working together. Okay, those four, last one is a kind of a little bit, uh, how can I write one, but as you know that, so we are now, the Korean culture is very popular all over the world. I found it's very interesting, the last one, in, in Korea, the 사랑의 부시적 in English, fresh, Branding on you. It is Korean drama. I, so I can read your faces. Never. Nobody watched this drama. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the story. North Korean soldier come to the South Korea. The South Korean lady brings to North Korea. Doing the paragliding by mistake, the Korean, the beautiful lady, she uh, moved to the North Korea. And they fall in love. They're kind of very romantic story, but it is very huge popular. In the United States, but nobody watch in this room. <laughs> oh my God. So in Korean culture now, we try to make soft power to smart power. I think you're familiar with this concept. This concept is made by Joseph Nye, the professor of the Harvard University. So his concept is the culture and the, and the country, they have to use the culture in a very smart way. They have to know it, when and how to apply both hard and soft power in a complementary way. So now we have popularity of Korean culture in the future. We want to take advantage of this popularity into a little more smart way. So we also want to do some the complementary the work in the international community too. That's part of it, education of Korea. When I have this kind of opportunity, school and some organization, everybody asked me, how about so now the South Korean, now the Korean people just give up your effort for the unification? It's very hard question. So on my last session, in the morning session, somebody asked me the same thing. But unify, unification of Korea. So Korea is very long and loaded way. It is because the from two part of First one from the perspective from North Korea, as I already mentioned that, I don't know the exact reason, but North Korean leadership now, they officially mentioned that they don't want to pursue the unification with South Korea no more. But it is very strange thing because the unification is a, their strongest legacy of their parents, grandparents Kim Il-sung, his father Kim jong -il. It is not just the kind of policy of North Korea, it is legacy. And grandson, Kim Jong-un, now leader, it is really impossible. He just gave up his grandfather, his father's legacy, without any clear explanation. But they are very serious. They said no more talk unification with South Korea. Even they erased every symbol of unification from North Korean, North Korean side. 
two examples. First one in Pyongyang. I was in Pyongyang 2000, 2001. In Pyongyang, there is a one subway station. The station name is the Tongil Station, Unification Station. Recently, they erased the name of the Tongil. The station name is just a station. Second thing is Pyongyang, there is huge construction structure about that with unification power, unification structure, but they destroyed it. I really don't know. So that means anyhow, the North Korea, they starting to looking into unification from very different point of view. Second, perspective from South Korea too, rapid changes. Now, our younger generation in South Korea, they have no interest in unification with North Korea. Why? We already have our own problem, economic problem. We do really have to find a good job. Why we provide any help to North Korea? They keep trying to do harm to us. They sending balloon with garbage. Why we help them? Why we do unification? No, too high cost unification. It is not only the kind of problem. So unification in Korea, it is very important issue. Make some consensus of Korean people. It is a long way to go dream, but every Korean people thinking about unification goal. Yes, right. Now it's very difficult, very hard. We're fighting together with North Korea. Anyhow, in the future, we have to do unification one Korea. That is our goal for now. We gradually lost this goal. That means a very huge, huge challenge to the South Korean society and government too. So considering those two big changes from North Korea and from South Korea, so we are now need a new doctrine, new idea, new goal. So recently, the Korean, uh, our president announced that the new uh, unification doctrine. We call this one not a unification policy. We call unification doctrine because unification is not an issue could be resolved by any step-by-step -step plan. It is a big movement, big, you know, there's some, some consensus building process. Do we call that the unification doctrine? Unification doctrine, very simple and very simple and clear. The first thing is we emphasizing the three tiers. Unification had to be based on freedom and safety of people, not only the South Korea, but also North Korea. Second thing, contributing to, have to contribute to the global price, not only the issue of the Korean people. And also unification should be pursued by international cooperation too. So key three strategies, encouraging free unification by promoting value of freedom and human rights. Second thing, creating a desire for change in North Korea. It is a very challenging idea by increasing access to external information and providing humanitarian aid. Third thing is strengthening international solidarity for unification through global cooperation and support. So it is a very simple but clear idea, making consensus inside of Korea on the basis of freedom and peace. And we try to approach to not North Korean government. We approach to the North Korean people. They have to enjoy same thing, freedom and prosperity. We have to do something for it together with the international community. So that's the end of my presentation. As I mentioned that, so Korea, for the not very long, so very short 70 years, we have overcome many difficulties and adversities. However, they achieved this current development. And as I mentioned that, as a recipient country, but we very luckily achieved so many de development, we are making effort to give back to, to international community. However, still the security issue of the Korean Peninsula still remain most serious issues. We briefly review the North Korean nuclear crisis. And even if North Korea used such method for their safety. Okay, so I have to say this one too. 
So I said that so North Korean the nuclear crisis starting from in 1993. That time, huge exchange, huge changes in international environment. They feel some threat. They feel some, they feel some, uh, we need something to guarantee our regime safety and to my, for my country. Okay, so let's stop, Let, let's say, we understand. We understand this kind of the threat, this kind of the instability of their regime. We, then we let's say, we understand their, the, their cause. However, North Korea using all their resources, all their money, only making their weapon, nuclear weapon and their missile system, regardless of their people's very basic life. And it is totally wrong. North Korea's newly, so North Korea's way, so I think the, we have given chance to North Korea by their own will to change their direction for the last 70 years. So there's no more. We are disappointed, pathetic, and no more. So we have to do something in this situation. So Korea's newly announced unification just envision a world where freedom, peace, and prosperity are enjoyed by both Koreas and Asian all people and also international community too. As the Consul General of Republic of Korea, not myself and also my colleagues do, our role in here in Rhode Island and also in New England area to inform you about this uh, Korean situation and Korean policy and also our vision and our goal. So today I'm speaking in a very delicate way. But I hope today's the conversation has helped you a little bit to get a glimpse of the Korean situation, the Korean new way of things. Thank you very much. All right. Unfortunately, our time has run out as we have to give up our, we have to vacate our room here in about 30 seconds. So <laughs> please join me. Please join me in thanking Dr. Wonderful presentation, and thank you all for coming. Greatly appreciate it.